Point B is one of the most defendable spots in the entire game because you have the high ground. They can only really approach from one area. You don't care if they're coming up from here because they're going to get lit up. And you've got that huge rock that they need to run around uh, to get it. That's why we're not going to do any frontal attack on B. All right, what's up, Giga Gamers? Welcome to the Strat Chat. Today, we're going to be looking at the attack of Fort Everfall. If you're on my server right now, we're going to have this big war. We've got it to save the server. Syndicate's taking on the Marauders for control of Everfall in the center of the map. So let's see what we're going to do. All right, so the first thing you need to do preparing yourself for war is familiarize yourself with the landscape. All right, you need to know the points as the attacking force, the southwest gate is the main gate. You've got the east gate, the west gate, and the out of picture is the north gate. We can move up here. North gate is up here. This is going to be where any occult forces are going to be moving, but the main force moving on the front gate, east, etc. Uh, you want to know that point A is to the defender's left. It's going to be on your right. Uh, point B, obviously straight ahead. Point C is going to be on the defender's right. It's going to be the attacker's left. There are some notable terrain differences that make Everfall the most dynamic map in the game and also extremely difficult to attack because the defenders have some very distinct advantages. Number one, this lake right here is a huge problem. It is deep water. You cannot cut across it without becoming a sitting duck. Therefore, if you want to get to point A, you either need to take a slow path over the slow water or you need to do the much worse option, which is to come here, which allows the attack, the defending force to cover fire you while never even leaving their position at B. So we're not going to be doing that. Next uh, important terrain difference is that this area right here, going towards point C, this is a canyon. You can actually hide in this position and you basically won't pop out until right about here. Now, an important strategical point for the defenders is going to be this position. That's why today in the war, we're going to not go all the way to C. When we start to go to C, we're actually going to go here, do a five count, and we're going to charge up and we're going to take control of the high ground, which is the next important terrain difference. The highest grounds that we have on the battlefield, by far, this is the highest ground you'll ever see in a battlefield in all of New World. This is worth capping. You want to get a team here, especially with musket players and probably a bodyguard. Uh, maybe with leaderships like a sword and board, get someone with leadership in this group so that you can just take this point because you will be able to see everything that they can do on offense. The points between B and C, this area is a little bit lower, but this is high ground, all right? This is normally where you find that shock bulb plant. And then slightly higher is this promontory. Uh, this both provides cover for the attacking forces they move for C, but also means that it's an exceptionally important point to hold if you're going to try to attack B and C. Whoever has this high ground is going to have a very distinct advantage on the ability to flank and maneuver. So when we're taking our forces, what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be attacking again, coming up this ramp. Our musket team is going to go out the north gate, and they're going to go off screen. All right, and you can actually scale these walls to get up here. They're going to lay down and get their siege points. They're going to get in their shooter stance, get ready. They're going to hold fire until we force the movement. So the plan is going to be the Marauders defense. They go like this. We've been scouting them out. They've go two, 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 and they have a flex team of four. And the four team starts middle and basically everyone starts moving over to wherever the fight is going to be. What we want to do is try to pull them over in this area we're going to try to get these rotations, and as they're leaving, as they're exiting this shorter area, we want to be coming in to punch. We're going to take advantage of their flank and come in here for a huge melee. All right, we're going to hold this ground with our with our casters, and we're going to be looking to uh, basically catch them, hit them in the butt as they're running past us. They're going to overrun and actually put probably six to eight groups on C before they realize that they're being hit in the back. All right, we're going to win this fight. We're going to use the momentum to take B and to then take A. The whole time, every time that we make a move, we're going to be getting cover fire from the musket team. They're going to be picking off healers. They're going to be allowing us to make these movements and giving us the most information. All right, with it, with this momentum, we should be able to set up a siege on C. Again, we're going to take advantage of the fact that this area is actually lower. We are going to try to take this area. We're going to use respawns on B, control this point to rain down on C as it's coming. We're going to avoid any fight behind their ramparts, as this will be affected by their warhorns if they choose to use them. When we do take 
the third point, all right? When we capture the third point, what we're going to do, because there's a lot of actual extra terrain in the back of, of Everfall, we're going to run behind, all right, both sides. Their entire team is going to panic, come back. They're going to get up on the walls. They're going to start getting to the gates. We're actually going to double back and barrage in point A and point C. Uh, this is an adaptation based on our last war strategy where we basically hammered down the back doors. Uh, I think that they will remember that and they will send too many people again to the back gates. We should be able to get some free time on point A or on gate A or gate C. Once we break them down, boom, it's going to be all hell. Get inside, take the high ground. All right, so here's the back and forward. This is where the rotating team is going to be coming. They're going to be moving all the way back here. If you can look at the map, we're going to be taking this occult position. Uh, there's a lot of cover. As you can see, they still can't really see your movements. And by the time you're up here, they're not paying attention to you. All right, they're still behind some trees. It would be very, very difficult for them to actually see you here. So instead, they're going to be focusing their efforts. At this point, they could see you, uh, but at that point, it's probably too late. All right, we're going to go, we're going to cross the river. Again, now we're a little bit low out of sight. They still might be able to see us if they're really training their, their eyes here. But uh, again, our main force is going to be going to point C. They shouldn't see this movement. The team that is coming up here, Musket Team, Soul of Anubis, is going to be sharing their screen. So if you have a second monitor, please tune into him. We're going to be using his screen as a way to get information about what's going on. You do want to familiarize yourself with this before the fight. You can come this way so that you never get seen, all right? So you go all the way to the backside. If we're pinging like right here, this is where you want to climb up. And as a sniper, of course, crawling into position. And we're going to take a peek at what we can see. So this is the battlefield, all right? And this is why this person's the most important position in all battles that you will ever have in New World. This position is unassailable. They can come up if they decide to go all the way around. They can move back in that area, come back up here, and attack you. But if that's why you want to have enough people up here, they won't really know how many are up if you're disguising your numbers by being further back on the rock, for example. But from this position, Soul's going to be sharing their screen. We're going to see all of their movements, okay? While they're also going to have a very advantageous position to shoot from and if I give you an example they can see all the way into the base they can see all the way the rotations everything except for the move to point C they will even be able to see this area this high point that we're going to talk about in a bit all right so this area super advantageous get your information from here all right and look how much information they're going to be sharing all right he's going to be looking in probably not at 3x zoom probably at 2x so we can see everything uh, careful not to give away his position. Most likely these players are going to be lying down, again, so that they don't get seen as much. Snipers, if you are up here, you have to take note that your gun, even though your crosshair is aiming at something, you can see that this gun is going to shoot the rock, right? You have to make sure that your shot is going to clear. The people who are up on this wall, your job is more important to be about information and major disruption. Uh, rather than getting max DPS off. We do want to get the five of you hitting the same target at the same time so we can just one shot, drop them, boom. So together we're gonna be saying, all right, you guys see that healer that's in front of the flag on, on point B? Let's go, three, two, one, shoot. All right, and they're gonna be doing volleys every every even second, they're gonna be going for shots. They're, they're gonna try to drop 46, 44, boom, 42, boom. Just keep on getting shots off. Uh, and then as the fight moves on, they can actually go for more focused fire every five seconds. So this is this position. Now, this is the way that they can get up. All right. Enemy team, they can move from the back gate or they can jump off those side ramparts. They can come up here as well. All right. They might, if they're an inexperienced coming up, they may not know the path up. That's the way up for them. Okay. They can come up, they can attack, but basically they need to put themselves in this position. They are attackable. Also, someone with a fireball can reach you from up here, but those are the only real threats. You've got bow. It's going to be very, very difficult for them to get the right kind of arch on their shot. This position is going to be our main shot calling spot. You can see at point A is going to be looking up at the base. This naturally uh, provides an extremely hard territory to uh this makes it an exceptionally tough point to siege. It is both uphill, it is also farther wide. The road here is farther wide than you would normally need to go. You also have rocks on your backside, which means you are trapped, very hard to, uh, to escape. And on your other side, you have got this pond, which I'll show in a second, is deep water. All right, you are not going to be able to sprint across this, all right? You're not gonna drown or anything, but you are gonna get 
this uh, middle or what do you call it? It's shallow, but not not super shallow water. You can't just run across it. So anytime that you get in this lake, not only can you not see anything in the fight, you're also a sitting duck as far as, as far as movement is concerned. Now this pathway right here, this is the what, what should we call this? This is Death Valley. All right, Death Valley. You do not want to take this path, not ever. All right, because again, look, I can't see anything that's happening up there. The entire time, the people who are up here on point B can see me, and they will be shooting down on me. They're going to see my rotations. And basically, the team that's just doing their job sitting in front of B is going to watch you come out of that gate and watch you start coming across, and they're just going to start peppering you with every shot as you go across. This is the view of the front gate, all right? You can see slightly Colt. They, there is a little bit of cover, but not much. It is a terrain difference. They have the high ground. It's also rocks. Definitely advantageous for them, all right? For this reason, we're not going to come out this way, but instead we're going to be coming out the east gate. East gate also gives us a faster path, if you can see. All right, we're out of range of their shots now, and also we have a straight path to behind this rock. Now, this rock is both a positive and a negative. It's going to be better for the defenders than it is for us if used appropriately but as you can tell they can't see anything still see nothing still see nothing now they can see us but this is not where point c is point c is all the way up here okay so what's going to happen is a lot of times a lot of attacking teams will come all the way to here and then they'll come for this uphill crest and this area right here is where you can start taking the fight all right a lot of teams will take the road the whole way just ostensibly, uh, that's going to get you in a, in a lot of trouble because if they get to this point first, again, they're going to have that same sort of advantage where they can see you without you seeing them. Now, exact more than more than any other place, that is true up here. A lot of teams don't want to come take this position because it takes a moment to climb and no one uh, wants to take that moment. But again, if you can get up here, then suddenly you can see a lot more of the battlefield. The one thing that you can't see is actual point C. All right, you can't see the actual point. So as far as controlling movements between B and C, this is fantastic. But for more practical purposes, we're going to be looking to take this high ground right here. We're going to take 15 seconds running this way. We're going to expect that they use the same 15 seconds to do this. All right, same amount of time they'll see us moving. What we're going to do is then change our path. Rather than coming this way, we're going to come up this hill. And we are going to catch this point for free. All right, they're going to be rotating to C. Then we're going to be able to rain hell on this team that's in this little gulch. And we're just going to obliterate them, hopefully get 5 or 10 kills uh, to have a major numbers advantage for the rest of the fight. Then we'll come back over to B. They'll be stuck chasing us. We should be able to set up a front-to-back line uh, to siege along this line as they rotate. Take B, take A, and those should be done very quickly. First attack is going to be at 2920, all right? So we've got 40 seconds to get into position. We're going to be attacking on the 20s and on the 50s today, all right? So save your big cooldowns. If it's within 10 seconds of that moment, don't cast any big cooldowns. Save them so that we can get big hallelujah punches. We want haymakers. The onus of the attack is on us, okay? As the attackers, we need to drop haymakers. We need to KO them. If nothing happens, they win. So we need to keep continue to make big punches. We have to go for knockouts. The first one's going to be this. We're going up here at 26.30. Or sorry, at 29.30, we come up the hill. We're going to catch them rotating. And at 29.20, we unleash hell in this gulch as they're rotating. All right? Then we come down here. We move straight over to B. We're going to keep some casters on that point, trying to not only deal lots of damage as they're rotating, but also potentially entice some of their team to follow and chase upwards while we're getting an advantage on point B. Point B is one of the most defendable spots in the entire game because you have the high ground. They can only really approach from one area. You don't care if they're coming up from here because they're going to get lit up. And you've got that huge rock that they need to run around uh, to get it. That's why we're not going to do any frontal attack on B. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, please consider like and subscribing. It helps the channel out a lot. I'll catch you guys next time. Keep it surreal. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.